Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. In today's video, we're going to be discussing training aids, things that you guys can purchase or acquire or make uh, that will enhance your martial arts training, uh, your ninjutsu training, your bujutsu training, your kobujutsu training, your self-defense training or weapons training, right? That's what we're going to be talking about today, things that you guys can acquire or purchase or make that will enhance your training. I get questions all the time saying things like, hey, if I buy this, is this going to help me uh, with my martial arts? Or if I purchase this, is this going to help me with my ninjutsu? Or if I purchase this or create this or make this, is this going to help me with my weapons training or self-defense training? I get so many questions talking about training aids. And uh, that's what I would like to talk about today. Things that you guys can acquire, create, um, make purchase that will enhance your martial arts training. There are so many things out there that people are trying to sell you that's absolute crap. And uh, so instead of going through the thousands of things out there that I think are just absolute crap, what I'm going to go through is a list of some of the things uh, that I think are valuable to your martial arts, uh, to your ninjutsu, to your bujutsu, to your kobujutsu, and things that you can use to enhance your training in those areas. Okay. Now, before I begin, I always give a shout out to all of my new viewers. So if this is the first video that you guys have seen of me, my name is Krista Jacobson. I'm the headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, which means School of the Warrior Way. We teach Koryu Ninjutsu and Koryu Bujutsu, so the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. The school does have other areas of focus, such as reality-based self-defense, weapons training and tactics, survival skills, uh, concealed carry, martial arts theory, thought and philosophy, martial arts conditioning. If any of those areas at all interest you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell. I do post two to three videos every single week, so if you guys are interested in any of those topics, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and keep up with what we're doing. To start, I want to say that this is a very vast uh, topic, so we're going to condense it to three primary areas, okay? Because once we get into training aids, there are so many different side roads and avenues that we can go down, and it would be a limitless series that we can continue to talk about. So I'm going to be very generic about the things that we're going to discuss and I'm going to try to keep it within three primary sections. We're going to talk about the mind, the body, and the spirit. So we're going to talk about things that can help benefit you um, mentally within the martial arts, physically within the martial arts, and spiritually within the martial arts. One of the more common questions that I get is, if I purchase the, uh, this particular book or this particular uh, DVD, will that help my training? So to start out on that topic, because we're going to be starting with that, I, want, I would like to say that first off, if you believe that it's going to be uh, beneficial to you and your training, then you should purchase it. I'm not the kind of instructor that would tell a student that they can't buy something or that, oh, that, there's no benefit if you read that. That's not the kind of person that I am. Um, that's just not what I'm about. So. I would say that if you believe that it, it can be beneficial to you in your training, then you should go ahead and purchase it. On the other side of that, I would like to say that you have to be very careful about what it is that you're taking in. Once you take something in, you're not necessarily just going to be able to throw that out. Do you know what I mean? So make sure that you know what you're going to be purchasing, you understand the topic and what it is that you're looking for from that particular book or DVD because there's a lot of books out there and a lot of DVDs and videos out there that are not good and I'm not gonna go through that list I just want to say you need to be careful so to start before we start talking about books and DVDs I want to say one if you believe that it's gonna help you then do go ahead and purchase it because I'm not the kind of instructor to tell someone that they can't read something or research something that they wish the only thing I would say again is be careful because once you go down that rabbit hole, and once you jump in there, you're not coming back out of it. You're not just gonna like, you know, pull that memory or pull that information out and delete it. It's there. And what we take in does shape the way that we think. If you're constantly watching certain types of TV shows or news channels or listening to certain kind of music, you know, or certain YouTube channels, you know, kind of thing, and certain people's ideas and philosophies, a lot of times people tend to start thinking on that in that mindset because like-minded people tend to think alike. So once you go down that road, once you start going down that way, it makes it very difficult to pull back away from it. So you have to be careful on what it is that you're taking in. Like for me personally, I'll give you an example. 
for me personally, I don't go down, I don't look at martial art websites and forums and Facebook pages or watch other people's uh, video, certain people's videos and all that kind of stuff because I know that their intent is very negative um, or um, they're not trying to be truthful and honest. They say that they're being truthful and honest, but their, their intent is to be more um, hateful or hurtful or separatist where they're trying to separate themselves from everybody else and nobody can be on their level and um, you know that type of thing and um, to me that's just not that is that has nothing to do with the way and all I'm into is studying the way dedicating myself to these seven warrior traditions that I teach and helping my students better understand the way and their path in the study and practice of these seven warrior traditions that we have here at the Buddha Dikai so be careful on what it is that you tend to take to take in on a daily basis because the energy that you take in every single day will shape your mood whether it's the music that you listen to the news channel that you watch or whatever and if you allow it to it will shape the way that you think and process information so you have to be careful when you're talking about well, I want to buy these books or I want to buy these videos okay I get it. it on the surface it seems very very innocent I just want the information but it's not innocent it's actually it can be very powerful and very controlling so be very careful that's all I would say now on the types of books that usually come across within the questions for me and I can only talk about from my perspective on my YouTube channel you guys hear me talk about books such as the Book of Five Rings, uh, the Hagakure, the Art of War, the Ban Senshukai, the Nimpiden, the Shoninki. You guys hear me talk about those books all the time on uh, YouTube. If I buy these books will they help me with my uh, training in the Bururikai? Will they enhance and better my skills in the Bururikai? And the quick and easy answer to that is no. No, they're not going to do that. Um, the Buddha Yukai, we dedicate ourselves to seven warrior traditions. Now I have to approach this um, from a couple different angles because I want to make sure I'm really clear about this topic. Because if I only express it in one way, then you're going to get a bunch of questions on the back end. So let's start with me and my YouTube channel because I do talk about these books all the time, whether it's the Book of Five Rings or whatever, right? So when I talk about these books, I have a YouTube channel that's monetized. I do make money every month I get paid by YouTube. So I have to come up with material that I can talk about to my audience every week. And those books, the Book of Five Rings, the Ban Sin Shukai, the Nimpiden, the Shoninki, the Hagakure, the Art of War, those are very, very common books within the martial art genre that I teach. So Koryu Ninjutsu and Koryu Bujutsu, they are very common books. And it gives me an opportunity to discuss those books that are very public. No organization owns those books. They're in the public domain. They're very public sources and it gives me an opportunity to take something that's very public and talk about various quotes from those books and express my philosophy and my understanding of those particular subjects. Now, does that mean that those things that we talk about on my YouTube channel are quote unquote re requirements in the Buddha Dikai? No, not at all. Uh, I just, so like an example, I'm going to go through, there's 10 Q ranks to black belt, right? So when you take a test here at the Buddha Dikai, we have three sections of training, right? You got your mind, body, spirit. So you're going to do all the, the techniques that you learn. You got to demonstrate those skills. You have the physical part of the test, which is going to be the physical conditioning, the sparring, and that kind of thing. And then you got the bushi ki or the samurai spirit aspect, which is the verbal exam, right? The kuden, the oral tradition. And you have this verbal exam so you can explain the things that you've learned on your level. Now, on the verbal exam, there's going to be historical questions that's asked. There's going to be some of the information or history of the different traditions that we have. Some of it's going to be terminology, you know, like what's a temiwaza, what's giriwaza, what's ukewaza, you know, things like that at very basic levels, just so the students know basic terminology. I'm going to use the first three levels as an example, but there's 10 Q ranks to black belt. So on level one, we have four questions. In, on the verbal exam, and well, there's more than four questions, but four of the questions on level one, you could get that information from the Ban Senshukai. If outside of that, the very first level, white belt to yellow belt, and those four questions, nothing else from white belt to black belt will have anything to do with the Ban Senshukai. 
nothing. That is it, up until black belt. On level two, you have three questions that will be asked. Again, you have more than three questions on the verbal exam, but there are three questions within the verbal exam that you could acquire the answer to those questions from the shonen key. Other than those three questions on level two, the shonen key is not used at all from white belt to black belt. At all. It's only made reference on the eighth cue, level two. On level three, there is two questions, and again, there are more questions than two questions, but there are two questions that you could reference the Nimpaden to get the answers to those two particular questions. And that's it. All the way to black belt, from white belt to black belt, you have two questions on level three that you could reference and use the Nimpaden to answer those questions. Of course, we we go through the answers and what it is and all that anyway, but I'm just saying that you could use that book to find the answer to the question. And then that's it. So when people say, well, I bought the Bonsen Shukai, the Nimpaden, and Shoninki, I think that's a good thing. I think they're great references when you're trying to study historical ninjutsu. But those are supplements to your training. They are not the training. The training is the seven warrior traditions. If you've not already watched my video on how to use historical scrolls, please do so because that is a great video for you to watch and I explain it more in detail there. I wanna paint this picture. You have 10 Q ranks to go from white belt to black belt. Once you get past level three, which you're not even at halfway to black belt yet, those books, Ban Sen Chukai, Nimpa Din, Shoninki, they don't influence the training at all. And I do wanna add that you're never going to be tested on a technique that's in those books because that's not what I teach. I teach the seven traditions. We use those books as a supplement to training to be able to help shape the minds and understanding of what true, what true ninjutsu and true bujutsu is, what the historical ninja and samurai did. So many times you have people that's in the more um, modern Ninpo organizations and they only study Togakure Ryu. So they only know ninjutsu from one perspective, one line, one way of thinking, um, and everything else around it, they just throw it out. And I just think that, I think that way of thinking and training is wrong. I've always stood by this, st this statement and I always will. Remember, knowledge is lightweight and you can take it everywhere you go. So although the Ban Shukai, the Nimpaden, the Shoninki, the Goro no Sho, which is the Book of Five Rings, the Hagakure, Art of War, although those references are not part of the seven traditions and you're not gonna be tested on all that, that's not what we are practicing and studying, I do feel that those are very good references to have and that the students should read it because I think they can benefit from it. People always ask, well, could I buy this book? And if I buy this book, will it help my training? Well, I don't know if it's gonna help your training. It's gonna help better your understanding of a particular topic. It's not gonna help your training. So when people say, well, I think when people ask the question, I get the feeling that they mean it's gonna help them advance to black belt quicker. And that, then that, if that's the meaning behind the question, then it's an absolute hard no. Uh, you know, hard work, sweat on the dojo floor, and busting your ass is going to get you to black belt quicker, not reading some damn book that you bought on Amazon. So let's say that someone says, um, I want to buy a book written by so-and-so, and let's just say so-and-so runs the head of a major NIMPO organization. Okay, that's fine. Again, I go back to the same thing. If you feel it's going to help your training, then purchase the damn book. But be careful. Now, another thing that you have to take in consideration when it's by somebody who's writ who writes books and runs an organization, it's written for that group. And it, it, this includes me and my books. This includes me and my books. This isn't me calling anybody out. This is me being honest, and this does include me as well because I write books for my students in the Buddha Dukai in this organization so students can better understand what it is than what we do. When you purchase books by somebody else in a different organization, assuming I'm talking to Buddha Dukai students, those organizations are gonna have different philosophies and principles, rules, guidelines that they abide by and what, how they approach their training than what we do. That doesn't mean that they're bad, it just means that it's different. I'm gonna use religion as example with this because this is an easy analogy. Uh, Christianity is a very um, popular religion. 
if you read a book written by someone who is a Baptist on philosophy, and then another book by someone who um, uh, is teaches uh, is a Methodist, and then you have another one that you know is a Protestant, and you have someone else that's a Catholic. Although the source information or the source understanding or the similarity of the three comes to the same point, which we would say Christianity, the way that they take that source information, research it, understand it, and train with it, and I'm using the word train, but follow me, and they use that information, is much different. I think people, most people know that Baptists utilize information on the same topic of Christianity differently than say a Methodist or a Protestant or a Catholic or any other Christian faith that's out there. So when you're studying books that's written by so-and-so that runs a different organization, although yes, me and this person and this person and this person, we're all teaching ninjutsu, and we all kind of reference certain similar um, historical uh, documents such as the Bonsen Shukai, etc., Nimpaden, Shoninki, Book of Five Rings, etc., the way that we take in that information and use that information is going to be different because every organization has a different philosophy, different principles, different rules, different guidelines, you know, that type of thing. And everyone has their own standard and whatnot. So, and again, I'm not trying to say one is better than the other, but we are all different in our approach towards the teaching of ninjutsu. When you look at all the big uh, Nimpo organizations, whether it's the Buddha Dukai or any of the other ones. So you have to make sure that you're very um, understanding of that because when you buy certain books, they're gonna say certain things and those things more than likely won't always align with the, the, the thought process of what we have here at the Buddha Dukai. So I just wanna throw that out there. Always remember this too, even though knowledge is lightweight and you can take it anywhere you go, perception is based off of perspective and perspective is based off of position. So now let's talk about physical training. People say this, should I buy a heavy bag? Should I get a freestanding bag? Should I get a double end bag? Should I get um, a jump rope? Should I get a treadmill? Should I get some weights? You know, all that kind of stuff, right? And my answer to all that is going to be, yeah, yeah, you should get all that, right? Here's the thing though. Um, one, there's always going to be money involved when you're purchasing certain things. So keep in mind that if you're training in martial arts, the martial arts training is the most important not being not training like a bodybuilder right so keep that and keep that in mind if you want to be good at martial arts you need to train in martial arts right um weight training and cardiovascular conditioning all those things those are good supplements to the training that's why we have a section in our curriculum of hojo and do it's one of the five areas of training it's supplemental training you do it to enhance your martial skills but the skills come first there's an old saying by Musashi, and it's, you know, you know, the way is in training, and you gotta train first. First and foremost is training. So, with that being said, I think that if you are a beginner, I think that purchasing a heavy bag, you know, and some gloves is a very important thing. A jump rope is a very important thing. Both of those are very inexpensive. You have it, you've got something that you work on your striking skills with. Heavy bag can move around. It helps you with your footwork and your distancing because it's gonna move forward and back and side and side. I think a heavy bag, if you have opportunity to get a heavy bag and a place to put a heavy bag, I think there's more benefit to a heavy bag than what there is a freestanding bag. Freestanding bag is just there. Of course you can punch and kick it, but the distance and the, the moving, the target that's moving isn't going to be the same. So I think a heavy bag is more beneficial, but it all depends on where you live, uh, what you have accessible for space, how much money you have that you can put into it. But I definitely think you should have something that you could practice your striking on in some form. I think you should have something that will help you with cardiovascular conditioning, such as a jump rope or a step, or if you have the money for a treadmill, maybe some of you guys already go to a health club and get on a treadmill and run, but I think all those things are good. Another thing that you guys need to invest in is um, a throwing dummy. And the reason I think that's important is because you can throw a throwing dummy more than you're going to throw a person. Now, to use this analogy, I'm going to talk about a heavy bag real quick again so you can get where I'm coming from. I'm going to promise you every boxer, kickboxer, and karate champion has punched a bag more than they've punched a person. 
the reality of it is you can't punch people all day long and get necessary reps. So you're going to need something to condition the body to help you better be more efficient at striking certain things, being able to hit certain things and condition your body for certain ways. So you're going to need bags to be able to do that because when you punch something, your bones jar, the joints jar, the soft tissue and connective tissue, it takes a jarring on the body and you're going to have to condition that or you're going to injure yourself when you're in the middle of a fight. So you have to get uh, correct repetition through training to enhance the strength and conditioning needed to be good at striking. So, I'm sure Mike Tyson has hit a heavy bag more than he's hit a person. He hits the bags more than he did a person. I mean, there, there's, uh, without doubt, he's done bag work more hours in his life than he has actually punched on a person. So, does that mean that hitting a heavy bag, or a double in bag, or a speed bag, or any of those kind of bags that you see in boxing, does that mean that that's better than hitting a live target? No, it's used for conditioning so you could be more efficient at hitting a live target. But you're going to hit bags more than you hit a live target. So using that same analogy is how we will approach the throwing dummy. You're not going to have a training partner that's just going to let you throw them over and over again for, you know, two, three, four hours a day. It's just not going to happen. So using a throwing dummy will allow you to better get down your footwork. The, the, the mechanics of throwing, getting the weight uh, uh, on the hip the right way, or get your knee in a certain position, or get your hands in a certain position, you know, all those kind of things. It does tend to um, better enhance certain skills when we get down to tai sabaki, ashiwaza, footwork drills, timing, stepping in for the throw, getting your hip a certain place, a shoulder a certain place, a hook a certain place. It gets the coordination of the throw down much better and you can have a throwing dummy and you could do a hundred throws a day and the throwing dummy could do, you know, a hundred more. You're not going to throw someone a hundred times a day. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Now, does a throwing dummy is, does that mean if you throw a throwing dummy, it's as good as throwing a live person? No, absolutely not. It's the same thing. It's not going to be as good, but it is better than nothing. There's one, some, it is better than nothing. And it does help you in certain regards when it comes down to coordination, footwork, timing, what to grab, when to grab, how, how do you rotate it off the hip and things like that. It does help with learning a specific movement. You're going to have to grow from there, but you're going to have to have that throwing dummy, especially for you guys who are in the online uh, ninjutsu dojo, because, you know, level three, we start doing throws and nagiwaza, and, you know, you're going to need something like that to start throwing before, and I need to see you throw a throwing dummy before, you know, I would say, okay, now get your, now we can start working with, you know, a training partner on this throw. I want to see that you could do it on a, because if you can't throw a throwing dummy correctly, I don't want you throwing a person because we don't want anyone injured, right? So once you can throw a throwing dummy correctly and have good form, then we can add a training partner. Now we're going to get into the spiritual side of things. And when we talk about spirit, on the scroll, one of my scrolls, it talks about the, the use of what we call bushi ki. And bushi ki means samurai spirit. And um, there's a big kudin that goes along with it. I'm not going to really talk about that too much right now. We could do it in another video. But basically what it means is the spirit that's inside of us. Spiritual training does not necessarily mean religious training. So you guys can be whatever religion that you want um, and still study ninjutsu here at the Buddha Dukai. I can't say that's the way every organization is. That's the way we are. You will, I will promise you I will never ever ask you to change whatever religion you are to do something different. Now, the next thing is, everyone knows that I'm into the occult and we have ninja magic and all that kind of stuff. So I want to address this topic of ninja magic and how I approach it within the Buddha Dukai because I think sometimes people misunderstand that and they take a step back. So let me, let me touch on this first and then we'll get to the you know, training aids with your spiritual training. When we approach the understanding of ninja magic, whether it's the esoteric, the occult, um, the Mikio or any of that kind of stuff, right? The Kuji-in, the Kuji-kiri, all the ninja spells and all that kind of shit. I approach it as a historical ninja lesson. You're learning something that the ninja believed at a time in history. I do not approach it as you're going to have to believe it. Like, you know, drink the Kool-Aid. We're all going to study the same religion. That's not the way I do things. In fact, you're not tested on it either. Though these are going to be kudin lessons. I want to make sure that you write it down, you read it back to me so I know you have the information, and then what you believe is what you believe. It would be no different than you guys watching a documentary on whatever civilization, 
and they talked about the religious practices and the spiritual magical practices of whatever civilization and whatever culture. You watching that wouldn't, and writing down that information wouldn't be any different than the way we approach quote unquote ninja magic in the dojo. I approach it as a historical lesson and you guys are going to be learning about historical ninjutsu so to understand the historical ninja you would have to understand what they believed and what they practiced. So that's how we go through that. Now with that being said, I want to just reiterate one more time, I don't care what religion you guys choose to practice, that is your choice. Whatever God it is that you want to believe in and practice and pray to, that is fine. That has nothing to do with the training here at this dojo. But when I talk about, when we talk about spiritual training, we're talking about Bushi Ki, Samurai Spirit. There's a spirit in all of us, a warrior spirit that resides. And how can you make that spirit, how can you enhance that warrior spirit? You can't do it just by reading books and learning techniques. You can't do it just by sparring and grappling and weight training and cardiovascular conditioning and hitting bags. Those things help, but how else can you do it? There's a lot of training that goes into the connection of the elements. And although, yes, the mind training helps Bushi Ki, Samurai Spirit, Enhance, and the physical training and the sparring and that type of um, exercise does enhance the Samurai Spirit or Bushi Ki. Another area that we have to understand to enhance the Samurai Spirit is the connection to the elements. So many times we're, we're in this world now where people just want to get away from nature, away from universal energy. And I think that's one reason why we become more and more hateful and hurtful. We're unaccepting of others that's different from us and have different, you know, uh, lifestyles. And it's sad. One thing I think all students of the Buddha you guys should do, you guys should take at least one day a week and give yourself just 30 minutes. Go out to the woods, go out to the park, take shoes off, and just sit in nature. I'm not saying get naked and run through the woods. I'm not talking about that. But there is some science behind what people call earthing or grounding. And if you don't know what earthing or grounding is, just look it up. Just put your bare feet on the earth. Get out in the middle of the woods and just listen to the trees and listen to the birds. Meditate on the things that you want in life. Find yourself. Work on meditation techniques. Become one with nature. We're so, so many people get away from that and they, we live this life where we're wearing like rubber soled shoes, right? concrete slabs that we walk on, half of the clothes that we wear is like 50% whatever this, that, and the other. Electricity is all around us. Wi-Fi is all around us. I'm talking to my phone right now and upload, gonna upload it to YouTube. We're so far away from the natural world. And that is what's making us become more and more unnatural and act more and more unnatural. And we need to get back to that as martial artists. So I definitely think that one thing that every student of the Buddha Yukai should do is just take time and go to the woods or go out in the middle of the country if, you, if, you're around the, if you're around nature and just spend at least 30 minutes once a week minimum in nature. Do your kata. Take time for yourself. That, that time for yourself, you and nature and nothing else around, that will help enhance and better understand you and your own self. And then you're out there, work on your kata, work on you know, your kobojutsu training and all the different weapons that's on your particular level or work on your various kata. That's a great way to do that and help enhance your skill. So spiritual training is enhancing that and letting it grow and becoming more and more confident with who you are as a person and what you can become. And to do that, you have to self-reflect. And the best way to self-reflect is to go out in the middle of nature, kick your shoes off and just breathe and be and calm your mind and reflect on what it is that you want and what it is that you're going to do to get the things that you want. So anyway, this is my little thought today on the world of martial arts. If you guys have any comments, stick it in the uh, comment section below. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go with this. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, uh, please check out our website at www.budodoyuninjutsu.com. There you can see a list of our schools, the seven traditions, uh, the areas of training that we have, and philosophies and principles. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you guys can always join the Budodukai Online Ninjutsu Dojo, and you guys can start your training that way. So, thank you guys very much for your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, take care, be safe, and good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.